Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is Q3 of the recent Lead Code Contest, Path with a Maximum Probability. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. And yeah, going over this problem. So this problem has a couple of components that you have to think about. The thing that I had trouble with a little bit um, was when I was solving it live, and you could watch me while I do that, was that I wasn't sure, um, was that I wasn't sure that uh, greedy works, right? Uh, so, I mean, it looks like a shortest path and it smells like a shortest path. So I knew that it was maybe some variation of a shortest path. Uh, there are a lot of shortest path algorithms though. So, um, so the thing for me that I had to try to figure out was that, uh, that multiplying two probabilities, you always, uh, the greedy construct is that when you add a node, you always want to get that no to that node with the maximum probability. And in this case, um, there are no cycles in this case because, uh, which is kind of like negative edges or negative cycles rather. There are cycles, but but you always, whenever you go back to you know the same price, uh, your probability probability will always go down because, well, I mean, all, I guess it could remain the same if the entire path is just a hundred percent. But effectively, there's no way to gain probability. So because of that, um, dice draw works because whenever you reach a node you want to be there at the maximum probability and and yeah and that's pretty much it uh that's the idea uh the 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 input is a little bit weird i don't know why they separate out other than maybe to be a little bit misleading as a problem statement uh they separate out the probabilities uh but yeah but i just wrote dystrus algorithm uh where i reconstruct the graph uh i put it in an adjacency list where where you know for every you connect it to V with a probability of W, uh, and I just use W because of their weights, and U, V are both popular graph constructs. Um, yeah, and that's how I construct the adjacency graph. Uh, I set the, the default value to zero, meaning that there's zero chance of getting to any of those places. Uh, and in Python, heaps are min heaps, so I and what I wanted was a max heap, so you, you see that I I just inverted it by times it by negative one to kind of you know start off. This, you're at the starting position with a hundred uh, percent probability. Uh, you set that as the distance, and then the rest is just standard uh, dice draw heap where well we convert it back to the, the positive amount so that I don't have to worry about it or think about it too much. Uh, but basically, you have this thing. Uh, if we're at the end, then we could just return the probability because because of greedy, we know that whatever we, whenever we get to a node, it's the best that we can get to. Uh, this just makes sure that if we put the same node in the heap multiple times, we just get rid of it. Um, and then here is just for every edge that this node is connected to, this vertex is connected to, uh, if we can get this shorter, uh, but and this is the current, the current probability times the probability of the success. So there is some um, probability theory that you have to know to solve this. Uh, but yeah, I set that to a new distance and then I push it on the heap. Uh, and if I cannot get if I cannot get here, then that means that I cannot get to the end, so I return zero. Uh, so yeah, so that's cute, really. Um The complexity, what is the complexity? So this is, um, let's see. So this is at least all of n, but or all of e rather. Um, but yeah, so we put each node in, the, uh, so this is going to be, the heap may, will have at most O of Y elements. So that means that every iteration will be log Y. And because we only do roughly speaking, uh, we ish, uh, number of relaxations, um, it's going to be re log Y. Uh, and yeah, and that's the time uh yeah that's time complexity the space complexity we well we store something for each edge so it's gonna be o of v plus e uh per se so yeah so that's kind of the complexity for this one uh this is i could totally see this one uh being on an interview so definitely practice for it because it is just the shortest path uh there is some greedy as well but it is based off things that in theory people should know uh so yeah that's all i have for this problem stay tuned for the live portion Oh, I have to put your got it so quickly. Uh, and then path with maximum probability. Um, I I was so so the short answer for this problem is that it is greedy. 
slash um, Dijkstra's algorithm. Uh, I mean, <coughs> Dijkstra's algorithm requires it. You know, it is a greedy algorithm, right? Um, but for me, I just ha I had to convince myself, and that's what I was thinking in the beginning. I had to convince myself that uh, I mean, clearly it's the shortest path problem of some sort. Um, but the implementation and whether we could do greedy Dijkstra uh, wasn't so super weird. clear to me. Weird. Also, the input was a little bit weird. In that, I don't know why they separate out the edges and the and the success probability and not putting them together. Maybe that, maybe they try and not make it a hint or something. Uh, but I also had did have some concerns about just um, in terms of uh, possible mistakes and stuff like that. So I was definitely trying to be mindful, but but for this one, I yeah, and I just I think right now I'm just trying to convince myself that. Uh, the greedy algorithm is okay because I was like, mm, like, into it, uh, intuition wise, that's what I thought, but I really wasn't sure. Um, so, so yeah, so that's basically what I was doing, and I was like, okay, uh, if I'm gonna do that, sure, the base case will be zero, so that's what I put there. Um, Yeah, and I was thinking whether, like, I was, I think I was just thinking about data structure for a second of, like, whether I need to convert it, and I end up, I end up converting it uh, to an, uh, an adjacency list with the success probability as the edge. And yeah, and then I was just like, okay, let's just do a dice drill. Let's make put a heap, and do 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 do. Yeah, we start by, uh, and th this may look a little bit odd, but in in uh, Python, the heaps are min heaps. So that's why I take the negative value so that I, but what I do is that the base case is that the starting node has a 100% probability of starting. So I put in a one there. Yeah, now I get the probability and the node. Uh, this is right now standard Dijkstra. I think I was a little bit slow, uh, but I was still thinking through what everything meant. And this is where if you had practiced it, and I did practice it to be honest, but uh, if you practice it enough, then maybe you'll be able to f type it faster. But I was just, I don't know. <laughs> um, I think I was pretty fast for these first three problems. Yeah, and this is again still standard Dijkstra. But instead of add, using, you know, adding as the rate, I did the probability times the, the rate of the, the success probability. I mean, I called it the rate, but um, yeah. That's pretty much it. And then I just have to add one more if statement for, for you know, for the, uh, the end node. And then that's pretty much it. Uh, I have to unpack correctly for my for loops. Um, I think that's mostly it. Maybe I'm, I don't remember. Let's see. 
uh, yeah, it looks okay. It, it looks to match the example, so I submit it. Wasn't a hundred percent sure on that 